Hello everybody in YouTube land. I hope you're having a fantastic Saturday. Today I am joined by Superfang99 to hello, showcase... Justin. Oh, sorry, I just stepped right over you. Yeah, you can say <laughs> hi. You can say hi. No, hello. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, so we're here to talk about a deck that actually Superfang showed to me when we did a run on the Patreon channel. Uh, and I was blown away by the deck. It was really cool and really fun, and I wanted to get Super Fang here to show it off. So, um, I'll get to kind of like what the goal of the deck is, but I'll throw it to you, Super Fang, for you to kind of just um, pitch like what it is, like what the summary of what the deck was. Um, the title, I think, is pretty uh, pretty apt. It's Bob and Joey the Rat and the Endless Eon Chart. It's like a Pixar movie that I can't wait to see, but what's kind of like the goal of this deck? Yeah, so this deck is all about uh, a card interaction between Joey the Rat, uh, Scavenging, and the Eon Chart. Albeit, it could work with really any item investigating tool, but the Eon Chart is uh, busted. Yeah. Um, it works particularly well in Bob, mainly because uh, he is one of the only investigators that can take this combo that also has four intellects. So he is like, he is made to be a clue getter and this just accelerates him in a, in a way not seen before perhaps. Yeah. Um, and it also works well because of his uh, free action to play an item uh, every turn. Uh, he doesn't need to waste actions to replay the items that he sells with uh, Joey the Rat. Of course, Joey can still use his free triggered ability to spend an extra resource to play it, but also you could just do it for free with Bob. You can just do it for free with Bob. So like, it's just it's just value town. And like, we're gonna, once we get to the actual slide where we're gonna be talking about Joey the Rat and Eon Chart, we're gonna talk about some of the timing windows you can do with it because there are some particularly nasty things that you can do as Bob, which is kind of fun. It's kind of like, you know, Bob Jenkins, this is like a build that like I think perfectly sums up that sleazy Bob Jenkins. He's just a sleazy wheeler and dealer with this deck. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to point out before we uh, go di go deeper, mm -hmm. um, I actually, I maybe have stolen this concept a little bit, not completely wholeheartedly, but I reworked it um, from one of my good friends. His name is Alex. His his archetype is he plays the survivors. He plays the weird ones. Uh -huh. Like he plays like Preston Faramon and Patrice Hathaway and Calvin Wright. And so he came up with like the initial idea for this deck. And I just looked at it. I'm like, this is freaking genius. And then I have refined it into what we will see in just a moment. Hell yeah. So uh, let's look at the uh, expansions required for this deck. This is like, if you're watching this in like two years, it's going to be a lot easier. Just you have to pick up a bunch of deluxe boxes, but... There's not too many expansions required from this one. Uh, however, you do need to have multiple boxes. Uh, you'll know that the little star next to S's County Express, that can, that's, that's just the Charismas and the Relic Hunters. So like those are now also in the revised core set. Um, and then we have as just um, a bunch of uh, other stuff there, just like a whole smattering of things. But there are a few pieces that are necessary and those pieces are essentially just needed for you need joey the rat you need eon chart and then you also uh really want something like lock picks like that's where like the the big pieces of the deck really can function in but why don't we look at the level zero deck and uh super fang i'll throw this one to you again because this was your deck how did this like like what was the idea behind this level zero we're not going to spend too much on this because the juicy part is the experience version but like what are like the the um the cards holding a spot for like, that's gonna get cut as we get into this next form. Yeah, effectively a level zero Bob deck for this ultimately just needs to have a good staple group of good items to play with this free item action, as well as to be able to recur with scavenging. And mainly those are gonna be investigation tools. So things like flashlight, lantern and old key ring. Um, and of course the shopper's catalog to be able to pay for all of those things uh, mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and so the level zero deck is basically just, it's a good Bob deck, um, but it only, well, yeah, as you said, it only really uh, uh, transforms when we get into the XP version. But right now it's just a bunch of items in Bob and he's selling them to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that I know the com there's gonna be some commenters that'll probably bring this up, but is there a particular reason why you weren't running, why short supply didn't make the cut here? Yeah, that's a good question. The reason I didn't wanna run short supply 
is in case it discarded Joey the rat. <laughs> That's very, yeah, because there's no answer to get Joey the rat back, yeah. is there? And also, also, I think it would be really bad if you discarded Shrewd Dealings. Shrewd yeah. Dealings is so good in Bob because when you play Shrewd Dealings mm -hmm. and with the combo we're going to be talking about, you will effectively get a net one resource increase after you do the Eon Chart combo. Nice. That's that does sound like a value. That sounds like a yeah. good deal for Bob. So yeah, that's kind of like where I sit too a lot of the times so with short supply. Like I know the card's good, but um, if you have a key piece that if it's in your discard pile, you're like, well, that's going to really bring my value down. I don't think it's necessary. So I, I agree with the non inclusion of it in this deck. Mm -hmm. Like. If there wasn't true dealings or Joey, yeah, just go nuts. But but yeah, also if you're much. a gambling man, like go for it too, right? Like have <laughs> some fun. <laughs> so let's go to the upgraded one, which uh, has a good chunk of experience in it. But um, as you were saying, the key pieces are Joey, Eon Chart, and then the lock picks yeah. are also like really helpful, right? Is there another piece guy. I'm missing? Um, other than the level zero scavenging, uh, yes. the lockpicks, as you said, are really important because it allows us to reliably succeed by two mm -hmm. to activate scavenging. Yeah. Sweet. So before we uh, look at this deck, um, let's talk about some of the notable cards here that we have coming up. First off, this is the thing we've been talking about. We have the Eon Chart, Joey the Rat, and Scavenging. So I'll just read the summary on the side and then I'll throw it to you and you can go into greater detail as we go through this. So Eon Chart provides Bob uh, with a choice of two free actions, which is most often the move and investigate. You do have three foot, so like you could evade, but the move and investigate are what you're going to be doing. Uh, when it's empty, it's going to just sit there. However, Joey the Rat is interested in buying it off of you for two resources, which is conveniently the cost of Eon Chart. Then, when you succeed an investigation by test by two, when it's in your discard pile, you can use Scavenging to return it to your hand. You can play it Actionless with Joey's ability, and then as Super Fang said, you can also play it Actionless with Bob's ability. Uh, the Joey the Rat one, you have to spend a resource, so like you increase the money by one, but you also have your ability if you have not used that yet. And then this fancy sequencing that I've I, uh, talked about that we can get to the really dirty stuff, you can discard Eon Chart with Joey during your Eon Chart, t Eon Chart test, allowing you to use it twice in one turn. And I can confirm seeing this deck in action that that just happens. You've done, you did that multiple times and it's, it just feels nice. So yeah. what else, what, I'll, throw, I'll throw this one to you here if you wanted to add some stuff onto this. Yeah, uh, if for people in the audience, if you're all curious, um, the reason that this works is because during a test, there are free triggered ability windows before and after you commit cards. And Joey's second ability is a free triggered ability. So you can use that while you're taking the test. And I actually confirmed this on a few discords just because I wanted to make sure. Even though you've already initiated the test, if the Eon chart is gone for some reason, you're still taking the test. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that you've discarded the Eon chart by the time the test is happening. And if you succeed by two during the test, the Eon chart is currently in your discard pile. So scavenging can bring it back in the same test. And if you're Bob, then you can play it for free. Then you can activate it again since it will not be exhausted this time. Yeah. And uh, of note that as well, the... Uh... The Eon Chart, because it doesn't specify basic, you can use your lock picks for that test, which yeah. uh, makes it more likely for you to succeed by two. This is something, too, that we also, with the deck, you can also do these tricks with things like um, old key ring and stuff like that. There's just yeah. a risk if you peer pressure someone into it, like I did to Super Fang, you might fail okay. the test and then just lose your old key ring. But we Flash won't worry about good. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is, it's a really nice, really strong, and actually, like, even though it, like, in, in terms of, like, fancy tricks and stuff in the game, this one actually is pretty low complexity. So if, like, you want to do something that's a bit more complicated than just basic investigate, like the old 1-2 Justin special, uh, this is a great thing to do because it's, even though it's, like, it's going to be very impressive, the sequencing on it is actually relatively simple. I also like it because you can technically make it work with level one Eon charts as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. 
Uh, some more notable cards here. Um, the question is, but how is Bob going to succeed in investigation test by two? Great question, past Justin. There's lockpicks and the old key ring. These are the ones that lockpicks you add in. Have you noticed that in the level zero deck, there was a flashlight and a lantern? So like you're going to turn one of those into your lockpicks and probably the other one into your... Uh, Eon Sharp, but like you said uh, before we started, the deck at level zero, like, it'll function, but it's not as reliable as the Soul Clue Getter, with that one. But it can still function very well, but there is a chance that a bad Mollican can make you just have a slower start than you'd want. But when you get these tools in your deck, you're just gonna, like, just rock it. Like, you're not gonna stop. Uh, never stop. <laughs> never. And then in addition, you're going to see this a lot in these slides, both of these are items. So, if you ever need to, you can just scavenge them back or sell them to Joey. Like, if your lockpicks all break, you're like, I'll figure this out with, like, a, the perception that's in my deck or something like that. And then you can just get them back or sell them for money. And there's just so much small points of value that you can get out of this deck. All right, I don't think there's much more to say about these ones, so I'll hop to the next slide if that's cool with you. Let's do it. All right. The, uh, we need cash. We money, need cash. money. We need money for both playing our cards, albeit, as you said, with shrewd dealing, it becomes a little bit uh, easier. And also, like, you know, Bob's greedy. He has a personal weakness, which we'll look at that and shrewd dealing once we get to the back final, the final deck list. Um, but Schaffner's and Faustian Bargain are, like, the best <laughs> they're <laughs> so good for economy they're pretty good yeah faustian just gives you five resources and schaffner's can pay for item assets which is like what you're going to be doing schaffner's notably doesn't help with the greed problem your weakness but it kind of does because you're not spending your money from your resource pool then um so like in addition as well schaffner's catalog is also an item so you could sell it back. You, you could scavenge it up. Like there's just, there's just so many, like Joey is feasting on this deck. He's a hungry rat and he's eating good. Yeah. Shockers is, is obviously, I mean, it came out with Bob's investigator expansion. It is very good in him. Obviously mm -hmm. Faustian obviously is a great card. Like if you don't have intimate though, like a good old fashioned emergency cash can always replace Faustian. Yes. Of course, but yeah, Faustian is, is still really, really good. Yeah, because I think in the deck list, I can't recall, I could be wrong, but I think this is like the notable Innsmouth card that's part of the required stuff. So yeah. if you don't have that, you could easily replace this with a emergency cash. Definitely. Then there's Backpack. Backpack is a great card to help you find items. This can be upgraded to level two if you really if you have in your collection and you really want to get certain items. But I don't I don't recall a time where you didn't find what you needed. And it's can just help you dig through and get what you need and especially with some upgrades that we have coming up on the next slide it can just be helpful to find what you need and it's also an item so you know what that means joey loves it bob loves it etc etc anything else to add for backpack here uh i mean yeah backpack will obviously find the uh, the, the really key cards like the lock picks mm -hmm. and the eon chart but also it might find some exceptional cards that we might put in this deck if you yeah. need to, but I don't know. <laughs> no, we, we need to. We have that here. We have that here. So these last two notable cards, you even said in the description that you sent me that these are like the gravy of the deck. These are like the pieces that like you don't need, but they're just like good. So they can be whatever mm -hmm. card suits you uh, as the deck still functions. Uh, and then this one, L Lola, she does a lot of things. She gives you plus one book. So now you have five. So you're even more likely to succeed by two without a lock picks. And then with a lock picks, you're going to succeed by two definitely. And then also, like, Lola just makes your old keyring even better. And then the red clock. It's the red clock, right? Like, there's not much more to it. Like, yeah, I will say, mm -hmm. uh, spoilers if we haven't put out the videos by this time, but mm -hmm. I actually don't think I played the red clock in the campaign where we did this. I don't think you did either. I don't we think didn't. you did. The no. deck is awesome even without it. <laughs> hey, even without know? it, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> this was kind of like the last little bit of the 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 gravy it was like i guess yeah. i'm gonna do the red clock i have four experience might as well do that the, the plus four though obviously it's like if you're not succeeding with a plus four uh succeeding by two on an investigate with the plus four what mm -hmm. are you doing so yeah. it definitely assures that basically yeah because like um 
It's just, and then like also like when, like this, the level two one, uh, you only get, you, the, there's the slower resource payout, but like if you go to the level five, like the level five, 10 experience one, then it's like really good. In that case as well, if you have the level 10 one, you probably also at that point will want to put some experience into an upgraded backpack because finding it is even juicier. But exactly, like if you're going to not succeed by two on a plus four, uh, you're probably playing on expert or something. <laughs> Like, yeah, it definitely is. A, it, as I said, it's definitely a gravy card because you mm -hmm. need relic hunters. Because if you yes. want the Eon chart first, right? So you can't yeah. do this and Eon chart. So you need the relic hunters too. That's another three XP. So it's a lot. So yeah, really like when the package is all said and done. This this thing might cost you like fifteen experience when all said and done. Yeah. But yeah, but like as as you're saying too as well, the core of the deck is still just good. Like even the 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 lower experienced Eon chart still can provide good value in this deck. Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, also, one thing to shout out about Lola, too. Um, her ability is even better when uh, you have that true dealing Eon chart loop you were talking about where you're netting one resource each time. Like, that's a, it's a pretty good deal when you have, like, a money sink that just gives you money back. And then, you know, you can turn that into clues. So that's Absolutely. nice. Yeah. All right. The final deck list again. So we've been talking about true dealings a lot. So this just reduces the cost of each item asset you play by one. Uh, and then when you play an item asset, you can play it under control of any investigator at your location. That's not really like what this deck is doing. Um, but this is where uh, what Superfang was saying, how you get one money out. Because Eon Shark costs two. It'll cost one with shrewd dealings. And when you sell an item to Joey, you get $2. So you're effectively netting one each time. And then the greed, as we mentioned, you take one horror. And if you have... If you don't have, like, it has resource thresholds where it can deal uh, a good chunk of, uh, of horror to you. So what else, uh, what are those, do you want to shout out about uh, this deck here that we might not have covered? Um, well, I think that's mostly it. I think that if you're, um, like, greed can be something to worry about, especially if you're kind of, uh, don't have shrewd dealings at the beginning or didn't manage to get your Schaffner's catalog. So cards like Another Day, Another Dollar can help buffer that sort of period at the beginning where you're like, I'm at zero resources. If I draw greed, I'm going to actually die. Um, but also, and this is another purpose for Relic Hunter, you can just keep your cherished keepsakes from the beginning and make yeah. sure to have them along with your Ian chart. And then once the cherished keepsakes, keepsakes die, you can just scavenge them back. So that's yeah. a good way to stave off the greed as well. Heck yeah, heck yeah. And like Bob also, he does have eight brain. So like... But the more tricks you can have, the less likely you're going to just get exploded by your greed. Like, Bob's just not going to go nuts. That's true. Um, this deck was really fun to watch in action. And thank you uh, for, you know, number one, playing it with me. And number two, letting me do this deck guide here for it. Um, before I end the video and end all this, uh, Superfang, why don't you give a shout out to your channel and kind of talk about what you do there? Oh, thanks. Yeah. So uh, I am Superfing99. You can find me on YouTube. I also do Arkham Horror, con Arkham Horror the card game content. Uh, currently focusing on purely in-player, like in-paper playing. Because uh, I've, if you don't know this, Justin, I actually started this game uh, on a certain tabletop simulator. Mm -hmm. And so I want to give back. And so I've only bought in to the paper versions of Arkham since the new revised core. And yeah, so okay. all I'm doing is buying the new products. I'm not. I'm never gonna buy a Mythos pack because I hate that model. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's that's the, that's that's what the whole channel is about. It, it, it makes it, that makes sense now too because I know you released a you released a Dunwich Legacy box opening, and I was like, oh, I guess I just he really wanted that uh, the new stuff. But now that makes tons of sense, and why the unboxing for that's gonna be nice as all those come out. That's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Well, a huge thank you to Superfang again for being in this video and also to all of our wonderful patrons and all the viewers like you at home. Try this deck out. If you like Bob and you like doing like, you know, some some sneaky stuff with Joey the Rat, I think Bryn would love this deck. So I'm going to I'm going to tell I think I've already told Bryn about this deck, but this, this seems does like feel like a Bryn deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then Bryn's also told me he's never playing another investigator again, so the more <laughs> Bob builds we can get the better. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching, watching. Consider liking and subscribing if you've not already subscribed or liked the video. And as the people in the Discord said, they want me to say meaner things to the like button each time. So like I don't know, push the like button off a cliff if you enjoyed this video. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. 
And as always, GG's. GG's.